Uhu. Ahoj. <laughs> Nachádzam sa na Islande, v krajine ohňa a ľadu. Som tu kvôli tomu, že je to jedna z malých krajín, ktoré nedokázal človek úplne zničiť. A som tu preto, aby som našiel čistú energiu. Volám sa Miky Plichta a budem vás prevádzať týmto dobrodružstvom. Vraj 90% islandských domácností je vykorovaný z geotermálnych zdrojov. Tak sa poďme pozrieť prečo. Toto je veľmi pekný diagram, kde vidno geotermálne aplikácie v závislosti od teploty. Čiže napríklad pri teplote 50 až 100 stupňov Celzia je možné variť z geotermálnych plynov. Pri teplote, ktorá siaha až ku 150 stupňom Celzia, je možné sušiť drevo. Pri tej najväčšej teplote, vyššie 200 stupňov Celzia, tak je možné vyrábať elektrickú energiu. What is geothermal energy? So geothermal energy is basically just really hot groundwater. Really hot groundwater? Yeah. Okay. And that's the result of a lot of magma and groundwater. That's, those are the two ingredients you need okay. for geothermal energy. Boreholes can really differ. Some give us 7 bars of steam per pre the pressure or sometimes some give us 15 so it just depends on the health of the hole mm -hmm. and we really can't control the hole we can just predict how they're gonna be yeah so we can pour it down there and then maybe they give us much less pressure than we want it so mm -hmm. so we don't actually use all the holes at one time our deepest hole actually goes down to 3400 meters so it's 3.4 kilometers so it's a long way yeah uh, is there any drilling issue? No, not in this area. The drills can handle that theft. Uh, the biggest facility is in Northern California. It's called the Geysers. Oh. It's a really big one. They use it in Indonesia. They use it in Italy. There are a lot of places you can use it. You can basically use it wherever there's a lot of magma and there's a lot of groundwater. This is a geothermal power plant. We produce 303 megawatts of electricity here and uh, 650 liters per second of hot water. Mm -hmm. So this facility both produces electricity for the grid and hot bathing water and heating water for Reykjavik. Because Iceland is a really volcanic area and actually one fourth of the island is volcanically active. The hot magma under here actually heats up the groundwater to around 300 degrees centigrade. So that hot geothermal fluid as we call it, but it's just basically water with CO2 and hydrogen sulfide and some minerals in it. So we harness that fluid by pouring into the ground to around two to three thousand meters and then it just shoots on up to us. We take that geothermal fluid, it goes into tanks where we separate all the fluid from the steam and then we clean that steam a little bit as is we, we take the CO2 out and the hydrogen sulfide and all the small water droplets so we just have a really clean dry steam. That steam then goes into our turbines, mm -hmm. spins the turbine blades which generates the electricity. But we also take that same geothermal fluid and heat up cold fresh water that you get from 200 meters thereabout. Uh -huh. So we heat that up just with heat exchange. And that water we then send to Reykjavik with pipes. So this is the piping system in Reykjavik. So it's actually a pretty, pretty big system. It's around 3,000 kilometers of piping just for hot water in Reykjavik. So every single house in Reykjavik got, has got hot water pipes going into it and cold water pipes. So we don't have water tanks in the houses. We just have an endless supply of water. So if you want, you could in theory take a five hour shower you would want. Mm -hmm. Never run out. Most of the electricity goes to big companies here. About 80 to 90 percent goes to big companies. So aluminum plants, mostly aluminum plants. Some to fisheries and greenhouses, but most of our electricity goes to aluminum plants because the kilowatt hour is so cheap here. It's actually cheaper for the aluminum companies to build the plant, move the aluminum from Australia or Jamaica, for example, smelt it here, 
then move it to the US or Europe for use. Because the piping system is so big, it would lay it in one line, it would reach from here to Milano. One, go! Teraz sa ideme pozrieť za typkom, ktorý varí na geotermálnej pare. May you uncover your business story. Yeah. How did you start and uh, why did you start cooking on geothermal stream? That's a very strange story, what I'm going to tell you now, because uh, in uh, restaurants, uh, environment, there's always a competition. Uh -huh. And always was it like this, if I make a special menu, somebody else do my same menu two weeks later, you know? Uh -huh. So I said to my wife, I have to come with something uh, unique, something special. Uh -huh. So one night I had a dream about this kitchen outside. So I woke up four o'clock in the morning and I said to my <laughs> wife, I have to build a geothermal kitchen outside. I, I dreamed it all and I know exactly what I should do. She said, take your pill and go to sleep. Yeah. You're getting crazy, <laughs> she said to me. So I know no, I have to do it. I was like, oh, Next I'll day you woke up? Yeah, next day I woke up, I, I started building this. Yeah. It took me uh, two weeks to do it all and it worked from the first day, mm -hmm. actually. So first I only use it to bake bread, then I start baking a fine cake like a sponge cake, chocolate cake, carrot cake uh -huh. and, and nice cakes. And then I start using it for making a good food. So I learned to work with the geothermal, you yeah. can get that there to cooking. Why is that? This is because we have a heat up to 170 Celsius hot mm -hmm. and 14 kilobar steam pressure. Uh -huh. So basically you're cooking in the hot air. Yeah. So when you put uh, like a one kilo of meat there, you will get back one kilo plus. Uh -huh. Because uh, when the normal oven will dry up the meat. Mm -hmm. But this do not. So we have to change the business into a uh, some some special restaurant and and some something special something unique uh -huh. we trying to be very good learner to learn on this power mm -hmm. so we put a pipe in the kitchen and we have an oven and pots running by the geothermal there also and now we are baking bread for iceland the airlines they use it on the side class for the special menu iceland the menu there mm -hmm. also we are making five different types of geothermal bread people like to buy take it with them home you know and uh, delicate cake we have also. Place special in terms of geothermal energy? Yeah. Uh, how deep do you have to... Drink down? Drink down. We are so lucky. You see the geothermal park is here. Uh -huh. Over there you see the fan there? Mm -hmm. So the park is there. Then over there you have a very nice uh, geothermal uh, exhibition area there. You can go and see it all. Yeah. Yeah. And they gave me license to plug into there. We just open up like this. Oh, okay. And you get a boiling water. Oh. <laughs> right away. Instantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a green power. This is the maximum temperature that you can get. 170. Uh -huh. So this is very strong heat. But like I said before, the pressure is very important. It's not good to have a high heat, low pressure because there's a lot of water coming in. Mm -hmm. But also we have um, changed the oven, used to be electricity oven. Yeah. We had changed it to uh, only steam oven, using this steam. So we have uh, two ovens here. One used to uh, spend 35 kilowatts, but now it's spending zero. Yeah. But working beautifully on the geothermal power. We are baking in this oven a chocolate cake. Uh -huh. So you can see it when I take it out. Very nice cho Whoa. chocolate cake. Looks wonderful. Yeah, so this is uh, cooked by the geothermal. And <laughs> so we already patented? 
No. You recently? <laughs> no. <laughs> How many restaurants that are cooking on geothermal steam are working in Iceland? You are the only one. I'm the only one in the world. You are the only one in the world? Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. Uh, if you Google it up, it's the only one recipe. Yeah, because I Google yeah. in the search yeah. engine and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, it was my first result. <laughs> O chvíľu sa porozprávam s majiteľom farmy, ktorý vďaka geotermálnej energii dokáže pestovať paradajky celý rok. How do you stand from the crowd? We can say Freedom Mary is a old greenhouse farm uh -huh. which we bought from me and my wife for 22 years ago. Uh -huh. We had that idea to to live in the countryside to growing tomatoes all year round and we have been building it up through the years. So we use the hot water in the ground to warm up our houses uh -huh. and then we use our electricity to make sun or light for the plants. Uh, and that's how we can be growing tomatoes all year round. Do you cultivate uh, your crops all the year? Yes, we, we, we saw them from our sheets, uh, uh -huh. growing them in our small plant house for the first six weeks and then we plant them out in houses. Uh, we change all our plants two times per year, so that uh -huh. means that we are growing each plant for about uh, nine months. So, and the plant is about nine meters long when we take them out in the end. Uh -huh. uh, we have 5,000 square meters in our greenhouses and we uh -huh. are sending about one ton of tomatoes to the market every week. Uh, every, every day, I say, every day. Where is your market? Only Iceland, only Iceland. All only Iceland. All, all, all Local groceries or...? Uh, all, every supermarket in Iceland, we can Every say. supermarket in Iceland. Uh, and we, 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 we think also it's so nice that we can be uh, eco-friendly because all the second class, all the green tomatoes, we didn't get red, we can put that all into our kitchen and make something good of it. Mm -hmm. So we can use that all in for the restaurant. And also we decided it would be nice for our guests to take the taste of the place with them home. So we made something which we can call a food zone mm -hmm. So we have now a, a little tomato shop in our uh, restaurant. So there we have jams, sauces, we have drinks. Mm -hmm. uh, so something which people can take with them home, tell the story about the place and give somebody to taste. May you describe how you use geothermal steam? Yes, yes. We can say uh, we are lucky here in Iceland. We have really much uh, hot water in the ground. So uh -huh. like in our village here, which is called Reykholt, we have our own geyser and two boreholes. So uh -huh. when the water water comes into our house is it almost boiling it's about 90 95 degrees warm almost two, boiling yeah mm -hmm. 200 Fahrenheit so we use that into our our heating pipes to warm up the houses and that's how, how we can hold the good temperature or the right mm -hmm. temperature all year round but also in Iceland that we can be proud uh, that all our electricity are green making electricity uh -huh. made from the cold water warm water both by running turbines and we use that to make sun for the plants every day so we wait I see this artificial light yes yes we use that we give the plants 17 hour light every day except mm -hmm. the summertime then we change it to to 14 hours but if the sun comes strong enough the mm -hmm. computer system take out the, the light what is growing there tomatoes cucumber we can say in our greenhouses we have specialized in tomatoes but in in Iceland we try to grow as much of our own vegetable as possible so 65 to 70 percent of the tomatoes which are sold in Iceland are Icelandic almost every cucumber uh, Sixty percent of the lettuce, some other herbs, strawberries, raspberries, sweet pepper, a little bit of zucchini, cut flowers, roses. How did you start? Yeah, I bought this land here 2005. Uh -huh. I started slowly rebuilding it. It took me nine years. Yeah. And it was ready and I opened it. And did you have to drill deep? or For the water. For the water? No, the water is coming automatic up from the ground. It just always flows up. Yeah? Yeah. And what is the temperature of this water? When it comes up, it's 100 degrees. We take it, all the water into one tank. Uh -huh. and then we pump it from the tank into the pool and we also take water from the pool and mix it so it's not so hot when it's coming in. There are no seasonal changes? No, but on the winter we use much more water. 
when it's windy and cold. Is it healthy for the human beings? Yeah, they say so. <laughs> Na záver, dovolím si menšie zhrnutie. Keďže som sa to naučil kopec veci, ktoré si môžeme zobrať aj ku nám domov. Poprvé, energia na Zemi je všade. Akurát príklad Islandu je o to vypuklejší, že sa krajina nachádza na tektonickom zlome, preto som tu mohol vidieť bahno, potom horúce pramene, priamo pred vami to bublalo, malo tu teplotu vyše 100 stupňov Celzia, čiže obrovská sila. Pre zvyšok sveta to znamená to, že musí nájsť efektívny spôsob, ako sa dostať ku tejto energii. Pretože niekde sa nachádza na dosah a niekde inde sa nachádza vo veľkých hĺbkách. Poznatok číslo 2. Využívanie lokálnych zdrojov. Veľmi ma oslovil príbeh pána, ktorý začal variť na geotermálnej pare, rovnako aj druhého pána, ktorý začal pestovať paradajky a uhorky v skleníkoch vykurovaných z geotermálnych zdrojov. A netreba sa báť, netreba sa báť experimentovať, skúšať nová veci. Poznatok číslo 3. Príroda. Keď je niečo väčšie, majestátnejšie, neznamená, že to je aj lepšie. Napríklad také naše Tatry sú oveľa malebnejšie, ako, ako pohoria tu na Islande a podľa mňa aj krajšie. Čiže tak sa nemáme za čo hambiť. Číslo 4. Čistota odpadky. Mal som možnosť sa prechádzať po meste, ako aj do všetkovej prírode a nikde som nevidel na zemi nejaký odpadok, alebo nejaký papierik, alebo plaz, alebo nejakú žuvačku. Tak vás prosím, keď budete jesť snickersku alebo nejaký keksík, tak si to dajte tu pekne do vrecka a potom to dajte niekde do koša. Lebo to, čo je na Slovensku, skládky, bordel, všade to lieta, tak to je už neznesiteľné a neudržateľné. Poznatok číslo 5. Pohoda a energia. Je prirodzené, že som hľadal čistú energiu na nejakom prírodnom skôste, ako bol kráter alebo vodopád. A je pravda, že mi to dalo kopec energie. Ale kopec energie mi dali aj islandskí ľudia, ktorí boli úplne ochotní. Nikto nemal problém urobiť interviu. Takže je to o ľuďoch. <laughs>